Hey everyone, hope you are having a great week. My name is Dr. Jeremy Thornton. I'm joining you live from Southwest Missouri. Would love to know where you are joining in from, where you're tuning in from. P please drop that down below. So I've got a short message and this is directed to my healthcare professional friends. Um, and so uh, if you have a healthcare professional that you care about, uh, please uh, share this Facebook Live out to them. And so uh, I'm gonna share a brief topic. I'm gonna try to keep this under five minutes. I know everyone's super busy and you don't have time to listen to somebody uh, blab on and on for uh, an hour, right? So um, the topic I'm gonna talk about briefly is turmeric and curcumin, okay? So many of my healthcare professional friends are familiar uh, with turmeric and curcumin, uh, personally, I have used uh, dozens of different versions over 25 years, uh, personally and in my practice. Um, and uh, it's it's uh, something I've, I've studied. Uh, I've been super interested in the science. If you go to pubmed.gov and just search curcumin, you're going to see over 21,000 publications on curcumin alone. And so we've known for a very long time that curcumin and turmeric was powerful. Um, you know, the lab studies uh, showed over and over again that it just had powerful, almost magical properties, right? But the struggle was always due to bioavailability. So what they were seeing in the lab, they were not producing in human studies because of bioavailability. So uh, with curcumin, only one to 10% may ever cross that intestinal barrier, right? That intestinal lining. And so uh, another problem with curcumin and turmeric, they're both lipophilic, hydrophobic, uh, which is a challenge when we're trying to get it into the bloodstream that's mostly water, right? So this has been a limiting factor in the success of curcumin and turmeric over the years. Uh, although we knew it could do a lot of amazing things, uh, it's poorly bioavailable, it's rapidly metabolized, and it's rapidly excreted from the body. Um, what I'm excited to share with you is something that I've come across um, almost two years ago was a new technology that changes all of that. So what we thought we knew about curcumin and turmeric as far as bioavailability has completely changed. And I want to share this with you because it's something that I almost overlooked. Uh, using curcumin and turmeric, um, I wasn't terribly excited to hear about a new technology or a new supplement, like many of you probably are in the same boat, and like, oh, I don't wanna hear about this. Uh, you do, trust me, just give me a couple more minutes. So this technology, when I looked at the research, was showing that um, this BioMS German technology was increasing bioavailability of curcumin by uh, up to 277 times. Um, that's pretty shocking. Now, I didn't necessarily believe that, like I'm sure many of you are traditionally skeptical, um, but I knew if that was true, that this was going to be something very powerful, very special. And so um, I, I did take a deeper dive to check this out to see if indeed it was uh, what the research showed it was, uh, and I can verify that it is. Um, not only are we seeing levels of curcumin in the bloodstream that we've never even come close to seeing before, um, but unlike typical curcumin and turmeric, which if we can even get it at therapeutic levels in the bloodstream uh, or measurable levels even in the bloodstream, it's, it's typically gone within two hours, right, because of that rapid metabolism. Uh, we're seeing levels in the, in the bloodstream that we've never seen before, like I mentioned, but we're also seeing levels uh, in the bloodstream at therapeutic levels all the way up to 24 hours later from a single dose which we've never ever seen before. So it's a combination, I won't go into a lot of details on this short video, a combination of nanotechnology with a micelle structure around the curcumin to carry it easily uh, in a uh, water environment, right? And to our cells, muscles, tissues. Of course, curcumin is only one of the very few substances that can actually cross the blood brain barrier. Uh, and now we're, we're reaching levels in the bloodstream where that's uh, happening and we're seeing just amazing benefits from that. So anyway, again, I want to keep this short for my healthcare professional friends, just to cover the basics. I encourage you to take a deeper look at this BioMS technology. Uh, I have an amazing wellness group that you're welcome to be, uh, to, to, to join, check out some of the research, check out some of the testimonials, type group down below or get back with the person that shared this with you and they'll be happy to get some more information out to you. Uh, but I wanted to touch on the basics about this new BioMS technology. It's something you really need to check out. If there's something I can do and share with you, I'm happy to do that. Uh, come check out our group. Uh, ask the person that shared this with you for more information. Uh, and I promise you um, that you'll be glad that you did. So take care. I hope you guys have a great rest of the week.